Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHope2018.com. At the risk of being banned forever by the PC police, I agreed to answer the following question that I received from a viewer. They they want they asked me what was what is the meaning of Revelation 13:3, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Looking at Revelation 17:10 and a, a smear of other relevant passages. We come to understand that the seven hills represent seven kings or kingdoms, five of which have fallen, one that is, and one that is to come. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. The seventh kingdom of Revelation 17.10 is the revived Ottoman Empire. And Constantinople is a city on seven hills. Now, of course, there are many cities with seven hills, but there's only one that qualifies here. This city's Islamic heritage confirms the identity of the one world end times religion as Islam. There's a striking similarity between Islamic prophecies and Christian prophecies of the Antichrist. Both come on the scene during a time of great turmoil on earth. Both come claiming a desire to restore peace. Both have a seven year reign. Both head a one world, uh, one world religion and uh, a one world government. Both of them claim supernatural origins and both reigns end in a battle between good and evil that brings earth's final judgment. Now I wanted you, to, you people to to know this because of the time that we're in. I don't usually like going past the rapture with this stuff, but this is relevant as it pertains to a time frame, especially with what's going on. Now, the capital of the Ottoman Empire was Istanbul, that formerly Constantinople, the capital of the Eastern Roman Byzantine Empire. Of the eight locations that were specified in the Gog prophecy of Ezekiel 38, and I know a lot of you, you you've got your faces in Ezekiel 38 and 39, five were located firmly within Turkey, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, Tagorma, and Gomer. They're, these are all areas that were within the boundaries of modern Turkey. The primary group that carried out the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, you know, we all know that was the Romans. We just say, oh, the Romans, you know, the Romans destroyed the temple. But this was the 10th legion of the Roman army, which was stationed in Antioch. The people who destroyed Jerusalem and the temple in 70 AD are the ancestors, folks. They're the ancestors of the people who in the last days will be the primary followers of the Antichrist who is to come and who will attack Israel. Antioch is located within the borders of Turkey on the southeastern corner of Turkey near Syria. The people of the prince who is to come, Daniel 9, 26, that's a verse that I know all of you are familiar with, will destroy the city and the sanctuary. This speaks of the Roman Empire destroying Jerusalem and the temple, which occurred in, in AD 70, who were stationed in Antioch. Take special note of the fact that the prince was yet to come. Only the people of the prince were the ones who destroyed Jerusalem. This tells us that the Antichrist will come from a future revived Roman Empire, which is a revived Ottoman Empire which is a revived Islamic caliphate, which is led by Turkey, the deadly wound, which is healed. It's happening in your lifetime, folks. It's not some guy, you know, that gets shot in the head and comes back to life. And I, I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast, Revelation 13, 3. 
It's not some guy who gets shot in the head and then resurrects himself back to life. It is the revived Ottoman Empire. Now, while Christians by the droves are focused on Russia or Rome or the Vatican or, or some pope or the UN or the US or, or some past president or the Ayatollah Khomeini or, or even the Syrian dictator Assad, Ezekiel 38 confirms Turkey's leadership role. Revelation 17 confirms Turkey's leadership role. Daniel 11 confirms Turkey's leadership role. Zechariah confirms Turkey's leadership role. Isaiah and Micah both confirm an Assyrian role. And Satan's throne is in Turkey. Now that, that's at least seven witnesses. The Antichrist is clearly said to be the Assyrian. I know you folks won't find this difficult to imagine. The first requirement, the head nation of the Antichrist empire, the first requirement that he must fulfill is the means whereby he can fill the role of mediator between conflicting factions. Now, he, he also needs a motive, means and motive. But in, in talking about the means, were, were that it can guarantee a peace treaty between Israel and the surrounding nations that threaten to destroy her. We've got the Psalm 83 war that must occur. Um, Israel defeats its border enemies, expands its territory, and feels that it's dwelling safely in the land. But then there's the outer ring of nations. The Messiah will confirm and this is what few realize. The Messiah himself will confirm his already existing covenant with the many, quote unquote. That's believing Israel. They're not all going to, to follow the Antichrist. The Bible says that Israel will rely on this nation and will feel secure through the promises and the terms established in the peace treaty. No other nation on earth stands in line to do this except Turkey. None. They even now have the motive. They have the motive as well as the means. Read what the text declares. The Antichrist will achieve this goal by trickery and deceit. He, he will at first appear peaceful. Many of you realize that. But then he'll show his true colors. I know that what I'm saying isn't PC, but it has to be said. Daniel 11.30. I want to read Daniel 11.30. For the ships of, of Chittim shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. The holy covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. Daniel 11, 28. Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the Holy Covenant, and he, sh he shall do exploits and return to his own land. The rest will enter into a covenant of death, folks. Death with the Antichrist. These are those who forsook the Holy Covenant. Just as there are believing Jews, there are non-believing Jews. Try to wrap your mind around that. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand when the overflowing scourge shall pass through. Then ye shall be trodden down by it, says Isaiah in chapter 28, 18. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Isaiah 28, 15. Two contrasting covenants, one of life 
and one of uh, one of life and peace and one of death and hell one concerns God's elect the other the sons of the devil now I don't know how to put it any plainer than that even I myself for the longest time believed that what we were looking at in pro prophetically in the end times was that all of Israel was going to enter into an agreement with the Antichrist and that that was just about the end of it it is it is not the case folks what happens is there are two covenants there's a holy covenant that the Messiah confirms with his people the many and then there are those who enter into a covenant of death with the Antichrist one of the main reasons that Christians nowadays believe that the Antichrist has to be Western he's got to be Obama you know or somebody like that is that he he must have a powerful military and only Western and NATO nations meet that requirement yet few in the West are really aware of the fact that Turkey has one of the largest and most powerful militaries in the world among the 26 NATO member nations, Turkey has the second largest army, second only to us here in the U.S., second only to the United States. Turkey's army far supersedes the militaries of Germany, Spain, Italy, and England combined. Second only to the United States. Now, that ought to run chills up and down your spine. Our government's relationship with Turkey is based on the false assumption that Turkey is moderate. It's not. It's not. Turkey is anti-Semitic and it is anti-Christian. They don't like you folks. Many of you will remember the Hood incident. Remember that when, when Turkish Special Forces, uh, uh, I, I believe they were officers, in Iraq they were arrested by American forces and they were taken to Baghdad. They have never forgiven us for that. It was Stanley Cohen, a professor at Hebrew University in Jerusalem, who said, it's still considered part of NATO and a friend, quote unquote, of the U.S., regardless that Turkey's past is rising up as from a wounded beast and turning into a ravishing monster, end quote. Now, as a devoted watchman on the wall, I will drop whatever I am doing to watch a news report on Turkey or Prime Minister Erdogan because it does have relevance to the timing of end time events. Despite Erdogan's endless public expressions of being, let's see, he's he, pro-democracy, pro-European Union, pro-America, pro-Israel, pro-peace, pro-global unity. The guy's probably pro-bacon, okay? Erdogan was caught making this quote. It was an infamous quote. He said, democracy is like a streetcar. You ride it until you arrive at your destination, and then you get off. And it seems that Erdogan is somewhat of a poet. Let me read you what he wrote. He wrote, The mosques are our barracks. The domes, our helmets. The minarets, our, our bayonets. That's the minarets. That's the tall, slender towers, you know, typically part of a mosque with a balcony from, from which, you know, they call the Muslims to prayer. And the believers, our soldiers, this holy army guards my religion. Almighty, our journey is our destiny. The end is martyrdom. Now that came from Erdogan. That was a poem that he wrote. And this from one of the most powerful Muslim leaders in the Middle East. Now that ought to be deeply disturbing to world leaders everywhere, but it isn't yet it soon will be. Now, the overwhelming evidence, not only from ancient historians, but also modern day scholarship, points us to the ethnic identity of the Roman peoples 
I put that in quotes, Roman, quote unquote, peoples that destroyed Jerusalem and the temple. They were the ancestors of the Muslim peoples that dominate the entire region today. I love you all. I truly do. This is Steve. Thanks for watching.